Hello, I'm Tom Kingsley. Um, I uh, directed a film called Black Pond, which was my first feature film with this guy. Uh, and my name is Will Sharp. We met at university, and I think we both had sort of creative interests before that, but we started out making comedy sketches together and com comedy sort of uh, one-hour shows and uh, plays and things like that. And the only videos we were making at that stage was short trailers and sketches to put online to publicise the stage shows. Um, and I guess once we left university, we started to sort of go our separate ways into... Uh, well, like I started acting and Tom was making music videos and advertisements and stuff. Um, and we just sort of carried on talking and meeting up, throwing ideas around, and we made a short film first, which was like a sort of experiment to see what would happen if we tried to make something uh, with, it was an A1, I think a Sony A1 mm. camera, which is like a, it's not a professional camera, uh, and a reflector board, and no, no, no mic, it was just like the mic that came with the camera, uh, and see what happened if we tried to make a film like that. So a lot of the time, because I was in it as well, I was holding a reflector board just out of shot, uh, and stuff like that, and it ended up being better than we thought it would be, um, you know, whether people liked it or not, it was definitely a film. Um, and so we just thought, well, what happens if we take that same kind of let's see what happens attitude to making a feature film? I think making lots of short films for free uh, is a really good idea because they're just a perfect opportunity to experiment. And sometimes I think people spend a lot of, of time trying to raise a budget for a short film. But I think perhaps that's a bit of a waste of time because um, the main person who's going to benefit from a short film is you from the experience of just making something and mm. editing something and seeing a project through to completion and uh, it doesn't need to be expensive for you to get the benefit of those things. Neither of us went to film school but um, we kind of learnt on the job basically so yeah as, as Will said he was working in, on, in, uh, on stage and um, on TV shows, so he was ha having the experience of what a set is like and how the schedules work and stuff like that. I, was, um, I started out as a runner in a production company um, that made commercials, so I learned a lot about uh, kind of the pitching process and then like, I ran on sets and I got to see the edits and I got to learn how to do post and stuff. So that was a good grounding in the technical stuff of like how you actually oversee a project, even though a commercial is quite a short project compared to a film. So I guess with the precise technical stuff that we could like, we found out, uh, that was really helpful. But we could also see from our positions as quite lowly actors or runners on the set, we could see what didn't work. And um, so we kind of saw that our amateur approach of just doing it ourselves and just having a go was actually kind of more efficient in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's that sort of, this sort of cliche about you can only learn by doing, we have found it to be true. Someone said he was going to give us £50,000 to make a film and we got very excited about it and we started developing it and we cast it uh, and we did the script uh, and we were kind of sort of nearly ready to film it um, but then he changed his mind and um, so we realised uh, then, however, that wasn't actually such a bad thing because... Um, we've kind of felt you need, someone needs to give you permission to make a film. And someone sort of had given us permission to make a film, basically. Although it turned out we didn't actually have any money, and we thought we did, uh, we were already sort of making a film. So that was like an amazing spur. So then yeah. we sort of slashed the budget and uh, spent a few months trying to raise it ourselves. I think it was that um, we thought you needed to be given permission to make a film. And then when the funding fell through, we realised that you didn't need permission to make a film. And so we just carried on doing what we were doing. Um, and then I guess it, in practical terms, what we did was we, we had already done this, but we looked at, we revisited the script and we took everything out that was potentially an admin headache or would have cost money. So it was set in three locations, basically a house, the woods uh, and a flat. Uh, and so, and we sort of took out characters that we thought were extraneous and tried to make it as manageable as possible. So really it became a kind of practical project as much as it was a creative project where we were trying to strip this story down uh, to the point where even if we had no money we could possibly shoot it. Ben Wheatley who is, um, who's directed fantastic films like Kill List uh, is also a director at the company I work at and uh, so it was really reassuring he just made his first film Down Terrace which he made for about 10 grand um, and I thought it was really good 
and we both watched it and were, we just found it very reassuring that he was saying, I did something like you're planning to do, you're not crazy, it is possible. Um, he, in very precise terms, he just said, try not to have too many costumes because even though you think maintaining continuity is very straightforward, you'll be so tired and rushed that like, if you change anyone's costumes at any stage, you will make mistakes. Uh, was just a nice, very precise bit of advice that we wouldn't really have thought of. And it was true. I think we made a costume mistake like on our first day of yeah. uh, filming. And uh, we had to like put in, we had to like work out when they would have changed these costumes. But yeah, I think the, the main bit of advice is just, just from other people who have done similar things and you know that it's possible. And as Will said, um, you know, every project, filmmaking is such a practical project where stuff goes wrong the whole time. Mm. Just how do you respond to the particular situation that you're in? It basically took us about six months of planning and writing the script. Then it was three weeks of the main shoot, although we actually uh, cut one of those weeks in the edits um, and filmed some more stuff. Um, and then it was about six months of editing it, uh, which is quite a long time, I think, uh, but it was very helpful for us. Um, and then it was about a year, maybe, until we got it out into, uh, into the cinema. Basically, what we did was um, we tried to send it into festivals, or we did send it into festivals, but uh, eventually it got picked up by Raindance. We tried to get a distributor on board because um, it seemed to go down quite well. Um, uh, distributors weren't initially interested because, uh, well, it's a debut film on a quite sort of small scale by two unknown people. So we sort of thought that maybe if we tried to release it ourselves, that might work out. Uh, and it did. Don't wait for people to help you. Like, uh, there's a lot of sort of, oh, if only someone would... You know, like, um, Max Fisher, Rushmore sort of vibe of, if only someone would see that I'm a genius. Like, if only someone would give me a million pounds, then everything would be fine. Like, it's not going to happen. You have to just do it yourself and trust yourself and the people around you and make the most of what you have. I think, don't wait. I think it's don't wait for other people to help you. Just do it. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think um, that you're never too young to start trying to make films. Um, l yeah, literally every, every little film that you do is useful and you'll learn something from it. Make lots of mistakes uh, and try and correct them and that's how you'll become a better filmmaker. Hopefully. And also I think like, don't, don't get bogged down in the, in the sort of uh, the funding and the, oh, how, we'll probably need all of this equipment and stuff because you actually don't really need very much at all, I think, is what we, we were surprised to find how little you need. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some... There, there's lots of also, don't advice. listen to anyone, so don't take this advice, because we're probably wrong. Also, we're not you, so you have to find out what you need to do. So just, in a way, shouldn't have watched it. <laughs> <laughs>